Hey, it's Denis Fyodorov, and today we shall continue talking about Russian cases. In the previous video, we have gone through the most common Russian cases situations. Basically, those situations are the key to that state of yourself when you are able to identify which case was used in some situation and to choose a proper case for those sentences that you construct. As for those situations, it's not me who designed them. Those are universal situations, which you also can find in various grammar textbooks. They will be written in other words. They are, of course, maybe even in a friendly manner, with detailed explanations and exercises. My list is a concentrated list of pure information. So yes, the needed situations are on that list, you can use them, but to learn to do all that, you'll have to develop a skill which can be developed only through numerous repeating all the same action via exercises and practice. That's how the brain works. No any shortcuts uh, still exist in this world uh, to substitute this exercising process. So it's still old-fashioned, uh, the same, a practice makes perfect. That's how the brain learns to do new things. So see my list for yourself uh, as probably a checklist, because to master all those situations, you need not only to have a list with examples, but also a lot of exercises to complete. But uh, back to learning cases. We have finished the previous video with the cases mechanism, so let's continue with it. In simple words, the cases mechanism looks the following. Uh, to learn Russian cases means two things. First, uh, to learn to choose the proper case. Uh, second, to learn to decline, transform words into a needed case. Or in other words, we need to first uh, to learn to understand which of the six cases we need to choose in a particular situation. And second, to learn to transform words into a case of our choice. It mostly means to learn to properly change endings. As for the point one in this big endless list of two points, how to properly decide on the case, we spoke about uh, this in the previous video. I gave you a list of 30 most common cases situations. You can find uh, those situations just explained in other words in Russian grammar textbooks too. Basically, working with uh, those situations, uh, completing exercises and practicing will enable you eventually to start choosing proper cases and to identify which case was used in some particular situation. And in this video, we will be working on the second bullet in this big case mechanism, which is word alteration. There are three ways of word alteration or three ways how words change themselves in different cases. Those are first uh, changing the ending of a word. Uh, that's the most common variant. You change an ending according to a rule. Uh, to learn to do this, you exercise to apply rules for all cases until you develop a skill. It's not really that hard if to look at it from above, but it takes quite a lot of exercise and which in this context means time investment. Second, a transformation of the word itself. It's a less common variant. It is used for some certain situations like pronouns and in some way for irregulars. Uh, to do this, you simply memorize this stuff. Basically, this way is not about the rules. A typical example will be personal pronouns, so you memorize their forms without any rules. Here is how they look. And then again, via exercising, you reinforce what you've memorized. Third, let the word stay in its original form, the least common variant. Here, words stay as they are in all cases, no matter what. First, and in alteration. Usually and most likely, the word will change in its ending. Uh, here are the examples uh, how words' endings can change in different cases. So, as you see in this table, uh, each of the represented words has a different ending. So, that's how we understand the role of a word in a sentence, by its ending. Second, the transformation of a word itself. So, sometimes the same word can change completely. And here is an example how a word can transform significantly in different cases. 
These are personal pronouns that behave the same way as in English. They alter. In the Russian language, the first variant, and in changing, is the main instrument of changing case. Uh, the complete alteration is not that common, but some of the most common words are of this group. That's why in its frequency, this full alteration is very common, but there are not uh, that many words that fall into this uh, second uh, full alteration category. So, the beginner's Russian grammar, which uh, teaches you to start speaking, is mostly about how to learn to change and it's of Russian words. And as for the fully transformable words, uh, it teaches these two, but basically uh, you memorize them and later reinforce those by exercising and practicing. Then the less common variant number three, uh, no alteration at all. It is a rare variant, but some common words belong to this group, so they must be remembered. The thing is that some nouns borrowed into Russian from other languages can be indeclinable, so they do not obey Russian grammatical rules and never change their endings regardless of the uh, grammar of the sentence. Like uh, taxi, menu, metro, palto, radio, coffee, kino. These were the most common examples for indeclinable foreign words and they have behaved according to a pattern that is very similar to English. They simply stay in the original form no matter what. You need to remember these words. But for you uh, not to get confused, other foreign words will act like native Russian ones, like London, computer, internet, and many, many other words that change their endings according to Russian rules. So, as for these indeclinable words, it, you memorize them as indeclinable and then use them almost the same way as in English and even easier because they don't even change in plural form. So, this all will be about memorization. Uh, you may treat them as irregulars. And when you meet an irregular, you memorize it. Probably you wish all the words would be indeclinable, but the most common variant is the first one, which is ending changing, and it is the default variant. Uh, the second variant is a full alteration. It is not that frequent, but quite many of the most common words belong to this category. And the third variant will be the no change at all variant, which is the least common. Now let's fully proceed to paragraph 2, how to change the case of a Russian word. And here comes the time to narrow down our focus. As we spoke before, uh, the case is applicable to five parts of speech. Uh, those are noun, pronoun, adjective, numeral and participle. So, uh, to start speaking Russian, you focus on cases of nouns, pronouns and adjectives and delay the rest too. And among these uh, three, noun and pronoun are of most importance. Uh, they uh, name or point at objects, while the adjective only describes them. And from the um, learned cases perspective, nouns are of utmost importance because it is the first part of speech you learn. It's where you meet cases for the first time and understand them. Uh, it's where you learn to decide which case to use and it's where the concept of case gets into your brain. Uh, and it's where you learn to impl implement rules. So you should understand cases uh, to understand how to decide on the case. Uh, during the nouns unit and other units are about the reinforcement of this skill and learning how to change endings or to transform words into a case of your choice. That's why from now on and in the further several videos which will be devoted to cases we'll be speaking all, uh, about only cases of nouns and nothing else. I don't have resources and, uh, and enough time to cover all the parts of speech so nouns that's how we're going to narrow our focus. Uh, to be able to conclude uh, these cases series someday. So from, uh, from now on, uh, nouns only, because when you grasp this concept of cases for nouns, cases of other parts of speech will not seem to be that difficult. So how to decline alter, transform a word into a different case? 
Basically, to change a case, we usually simply change the ending of a word from the nominative case singular number, which is a default dictionary form of words, uh, to the ending that is supposed to be in a particular case of our choice. So we use a singular form of the nominative case as a basis, even if the target word is in the plural form. So we simply use a word from a dictionary and then apply a rule to it. The algorithm of changing the case is the following. First, we take a noun in the default nominative singular dictionary case. Uh, we decide on its gender by looking at the last letter. Uh, then, according to the rule, we change the ending into a desired case. Later, when you learn cases of nouns on some average level, you will not have to identify the gender of a noun every time. You will be just applying the rule directly, even sometimes without looking at the rule. But at this beginner's uh, stage, as a secondary goal, we are also teaching ourselves to instantly decide on the gender of a noun, uh, which requires quite a lot of practice. So we always first uh, decide on the gender uh, and you will need this gender stuff in the future, like for adjectives and numerals. For nouns, uh, genders are not that important uh, in terms of cases because each noun already has its fix, fixed gender. But for adjectives, uh, genders are very important because uh, they are floating. So the same adjective uh, can be of any gender. So basically, in nouns, uh, only number and, ca and case are variable uh, and the genders are fixed. But for other parts of speech, gender is going to be variable too. Uh, also, I'd like to point out that we have different endings uh, for singular and plural forms for nouns. So we should have like two sets of rules for every case, for the singular form and for the plural form. So, the mechanism of changing endings or changing of a case or declension is uh, quite simple in general, but the problem is that there are a lot of rules, many endings, and it's impossible to consciously memorize and apply all of this. So, the mechanism of learning to change endings is basically about practicing in changing endings more and more and then mastering this into a skill, which can be done only with lots of practice. Uh, a lot of practice is a natural way for the brain to master things. And cases are not an exception. Uh, so if you have a thick exercise book, well, that might help you to develop an ending changing skill. So how declension is done in Russian, again, and in more detail. Generally, the mechanism is looking this way. First, we take a word in the nominative case singular form. This is the default form and the default case used in dictionaries. So we take a word in its default form. Second, we decide what we need to do to change a form into plural or to change a case or do both uh, or change a gender maybe, but nouns do not change in gender, of course. Third, we do this change by altering the ending of the word to fit its new form according to a rule. So, let's take a noun and try to decline it. On the screen you see a declension rule. Uh, let's take a rule for the dative case. For other cases this rule will look similar, just other variants of endings will be filled into these cells. So, there are two sets of rules for each case because, as we've talked before, all this cases stuff is not only about cases, but also about a gender and a number. So the dative singular rule will look this way. And for the plural form, as there are no genders in the plural form, where uh, the rule looks this simply. I'm even feeling embarrassed about this simplicity. So sorry, guys. So we take a singular form, which is a bit harder. First, what you can see is that we take a word in its default form, the nominative singular. Uh, that's what we always uh, do even for the plural form. Uh, that's where we start off. Uh, then, as you can see, uh, Russian nouns do not just end in some random chaotic manner, but they follow patterns. So they are allowed to end this way only in some certain letters. 
These endings belong to masculine gender, these to feminine, these to neuter. So the gender in, in Russian is decided via looking at last letters of the word. So yes, that's how we do things. In, in Russian we have a slightly different approach to genders. Uh, so how the word ends directly influences its gender. So uh, like the planet, uh, planeta will be she because it ends in a and city, город will be he as it ends with a consonant. So Russian words do not just end in some random chaotic manner, but they follow patterns. And uh, so uh, nouns, for example, are allowed to end this way only in some certain letters. These endings belong to masculine gender, these to feminine, these to neuter. And then, depending on the ending of the nominative singular, we perform an action described here, which is ending alteration. So, the dative case is a case corresponding to English preposition to. The dative case shows us the indirect object, the person or thing that is shown, told something. So, let's choose this to context and several examples. Друг, friend. Я пойду к другу. I will go to a friend. Друг uh, ends in a consonant, which means it has this masculine gender, so we add u and get drugu. That's how we go dative for this word. Герой, hero. Президент вручил медаль герою. The president gave a medal to the hero. It ends in ikratka, so the word has a masculine gender, so as per rule we remove ikratka and add u and get this герою. Mama, mom. Я покажу это маме. I'll show this to mom. Uh, we remove a and add ye and get маме. Uh, so again, we take a noun in, in its default dictionary form, which is a nominative singular. Choose a destination case and number, and then we look at the words ending to change the ending according to a rule. Uh, that's the mechanism. That was the beginner's mechanism, an ideal conditions mechanism which should be mastered before proceeding with the real life stuff. Uh, so what things are you going to face when you like finish a nouns unit in a textbook and maybe want to apply your fresh, solid knowledge in real life? Uh, what are the pitfalls? If we return to the basic mechanism of cases, here, is it, uh, here it is again and what's going to happen in real life. First, we take a noun in the default nominative singular dictionary case. Second, we decide on its gender by looking at the last letter. Third, then, uh, according to the rule, we change the ending into a desired case. And then, uh, one of the following two variants occur. First, you've done everything properly and you are fine. Uh, second, then, there might be this next fourth point in this list, which is Houston, we have a problem. So yes, there are pitfalls and there can be a problem in real life and Houston is not going to be of help. And the problem might happen because of these two important things. Russian spelling rules, irregulars. In this case is serious, I am planning to create a special video devoted to these two. But shortly, Russian spelling rules are some common Russian rules based on Russian phonetics uh, that tell you what you can write and what you cannot. Actually, I have a video about these rules on this channel and the main idea about them is that first, uh, some certain differently uh, written combinations of letters in Russian sound exactly the same. Second, some combinations of letters are not normally used in modern Russian. So these Russian spelling rules address those special combinations and tell you how to properly write them. Spelling rules fix possible ambiguity because if some combination sounds one way but can be written down in two ways, uh, how to write it down properly. So the Russian spelling rules tell you how to write down those dual combinations properly 
and also address some combinations that you should never write down. That's the bigger picture. So they solve ambiguity and also prevent you from using combinations of letters that are not used in Russian anymore. What do cases have to do with these rules? So in the real life Russian language, you will see that the rules for changing endings that you are going to learn in the Russian grammar may sometimes contradict the Russian spelling rules. And the Russian spelling rules are above the other rules in their rank, uh, which means that if such contradiction happens, Russian spelling rules win. A very common example would be книга, book. According to a declension rule, книга ends in a, so to get plural we need to remove a and add u, so we get книгы. But according to Russian spelling rules, after g we can never write and need to write e. So the proper var variant will be книги, books. So sometimes cases rules contradict the Russian spelling rules and the last possess the highest priority in such situations. But uh, to tell the truth, when learning Russian, uh, Russian spelling rules uh, connected mistakes uh, will, will not always be that bad. Because, as I've already mentioned, um, in real life they mostly relate to writing. And writing nowadays is mostly about um, a keyboard with this uh, function of mistakes correction. And the typical thing about those rules when you are a beginner and learning Russian will be something like you may be finding typos in keys to exercises, like you decline a word as parole, then you go to keys uh, to check yourself, uh, find there that you've made a mistake, uh, then check yourself again and find out that you've done everything as parole, so it's a typo in keys then, right? Well, in those situations probably the typo was in your head and it was related to the Russian spelling rules. The second moment to mention is Russian irregulars. As for the irregulars, uh, those are words that alter not exactly as per rule. As discussed before, normally we just take a rule and then apply it to the word. Usually it is something like removing the last letter and then adding another one. For irregulars, uh, some of those rules may not work. Mostly these irregulars thing is about nouns. Nouns that do not change their form or case according to the standard rules are called irregular nouns and the easiest way of dealing with the irregulars is just to learn them. Shortly, singular irregulars. There are two singular common irregular nouns that we need to learn at first. Mat, mother and doch, daughter. Here is the table with these two nouns in every case. Your task is to remember how to dec decline these two nouns. These were the singular irregulars. As for the pu plural irregulars, there are about like several dozens of common irregulars, which is probably not that much, so they definitely can be learned. And also like the third group of irregular nouns would be some common nouns in the prepositional case because some regular nouns in that case behave as not plural, but there are not a lot of them and actually even if you make a mistake here it will not look like some big mistake, so no, no big deal. However, learn those prepositional irregulars too and they should be in your Russian textbook in a chapter devoted to the prepositional case. So, that's it about the ending changing mechanism of Russian cases. That's what the most of Russian grammar is all about, about changing endings. Of course, there are also suffixes and prefixes which also alter, but ending changing is the main instrument of the Russian language and after learning how to do that, you will be able to not just say something in Russian, but to start speaking Russian. See you in further videos. Bye.